It was a turning point for one of the most popular and influential franchises of all time, a milestone for both the production and the audience. For some, it was the end of the road. For others, the moment everything shifted into Turbo. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Thank you to 80stees.com for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below and use code TOYGALAXY to get 30% off your order today. 80stees.com started off as the source for t-shirts inspired by all things pop culture from the 1980s, but there's more to the 80s than just the 80s. They've got shirts inspired by the 70s, the decade that paved the way for the 80s. They've got shirts inspired by the 90s, the decade that carried on the legacy of the 80s. They've got shirts inspired by the 2000s, because the 80s isn't just a decade, it's a state of mind. Whether your interests are laser-focused on one thing, say, movies, there's plenty of choices from Jaws to Shaun of the Dead. If your interests bounce around, they've got shirts from cartoons to video games, superheroes to music and wrestling. From Transformers to Dungeons and Dragons, Gollum to Ron Burgundy, Darkwing Duck to Powerpuff Girls, from Pong to Street Fighter II. Their goal is to have something for everyone that loves retro pop culture. Whether your favorite cartoon is Gem and the Holograms or Robotech, or your favorite movie is The Karate Kid or Sixteen Candles, you'll find something you love. Click the link below and use code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order today. Again, that's code TOYGALAXY for 30% off your order. Thanks again to 80stees.com. Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, is a Power Rangers movie released in 1997, written by Shel Danielson and Shuki Levy, directed by David Winning and Shuki Levy. It's the second trip to the movie theater for the franchise, but this time with a smaller budget, fewer ticket sales, and 20% more child endangerment. You're not part of the Turbo team! Don't run! Somewhere deep in space, an opening crawl text delivers a significant amount of exposition. Sassy space pirate Divatox and her band of evil minions are on the hunt for the great space wizard Larigo and his magic golden key. The golden key is the only thing that can unlock the dimensional gateway of the universe, which Divatox needs in order to release a terrible demon-like creature named Malagor, whom she intends to marry, bringing forth a reign of terror on the galaxy. Larigo's only chance is to seek the help of powerful friends. Smash cut to the Power Rangers training for a charity martial arts tournament. On the line is $25,000, which if they win, they can use to prevent the Little Angels Haven Youth Shelter from permanently closing. That's of particular interest to the Power Rangers friend and youth shelter resident Justin, whose mother passed away and whose father gave up custody. His luck is about to turn because Blue Ranger Rocky DeSantos hurts his back during training, opening up a spot for a kid with at least as much attitude as a teenager. Justin will get to live out the fantasy of every kid who ever watched Power Rangers as Zordon chooses him to be the next Blue Ranger, just in time because it's going to take the entire team and their new Turbo Zords to rescue Larigo from Divatox and stop Malagor before their terrible marriage destroys the universe as we know it. The first Power Rangers movie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the Movie, was released in June of 1995, hot on the heels of the first two seasons of the mega-hit Fox Kids television series Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The Power Rangers were a bona fide pop culture phenomenon that reshaped the landscape for kids' media, marketing, and merchandising, gobbling up billions of dollars in the toy aisle. Despite making nearly $70 million at the box office, the first Power Rangers movie began to reveal cracks in the young franchise. Producers had to make decisions about what the future of the franchise would be, given its historically low production budget, and over-reliance on previously existing fight footage from Japan. See, Power Rangers as a TV series was hastily assembled by Saban Entertainment for Fox Kids in 1993. The idea was to very inexpensively adapt the already successful Super Sentai series from Japan by recycling all of the action footage dubbed with English-speaking actors. That meant that at least a third of every episode was nearly done before production even began. That saved a lot of money, as did Saban Entertainment's insistence on working with non-union performers, which we will come back to in a moment. By the second season of the U.S. television series, Saban was married to costumes that the Japanese series had already moved on from. The idea of abandoning the iconography of what had so quickly become a billion-dollar franchise was antithetical to the way business was done in the U.S. The 1995 movie was an attempt to cash in on the Power Rangers craze and use it as a mechanism to transition to the next wave of Ranger suits and robots and toys, a formula that, if successful, could be repeated every year thereafter. However, the movie was shot at the same time as the second season of Power Rangers, which came as a surprise to the non-union cast members who weren't being paid anything extra for the feature film. Heck, they were barely being paid anything to begin with. Fed up with low pay and dangerous working conditions, Austin St. John, Walter Jones, and Tui Trang, three of the six original Rangers walked out. As a result, the Power Rangers theatrical debut in 1995, just two years into the franchise, featured three second-generation Rangers, Steve Cardenas, Johnny Young Bosch, and Karen Ashley. 
The movie was considered a box office success, but a critical failure even with fans of the series. It was subsequently rendered non-canon when 1995 Season 3 featured a four-episode arc that essentially told the same story as the movie again, but differently and completely without movie villain Ivan Ooze. Catherine Sutherland replaced Amy Jo Johnson, the original Pink Ranger, midway through 1995 Season 3. At the conclusion of Season 3, the Yellow Ranger was replaced for a second time with Nakia Baris. By the time production began on Season 4 in 1996, Jason David Frank and David Yost were the only Season 1 Rangers left on the cast. Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, was shot simultaneously with that fourth season, titled Power Rangers Zeo, the first season to drop Mighty Morphin from the name. Longtime Power Rangers producer, director, and writer Shuki Levy intended for 1997's Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, to be a reunion of the original 1994 cast, but fate would not have it so. Austin St. John and Amy Jo Johnson, the original Red and Pink Rangers, agreed to return if there was a way to make it interesting for them, to let them do something different with their characters, if, in their words, they could be evil. On the other hand, original Black and Yellow Rangers, Walter Jones and Tui Trang, refused to give up their union membership in order to be a part of the production. David Yost, who was already shooting season four and did agree to be in the movie, walked out during production of both the film and the series due to relentless homophobic harassment that dated back to the beginning of the series. Early drafts of the script featured Yost in a prominent role as Billy, the technical consultant to the Power Rangers instead of a ranger himself. Billy would have played a role in the development of the new Rangers gear for the movie, but his departure resulted in a restructuring of both Power Rangers Zeo and the Turbo movie. That script was written and rewritten by Shell Danielson and Shuki Levy. Danielson had written dozens of episodes of Power Rangers. Levy was, of course, one of the key producers of the series, as well as one of the main writers and directors. Levy and Danielson had just co-written a film that I am pretty sure was unrelated to the Power Rangers franchise called Exception to the Rule, starring Sean Young, Kim Cattrall, and Eric McCormick, and directed by David Winning. Winning had been an independent filmmaker for most of his career up to that point, making small films with non-existent budgets, but also building a portfolio of television series like Friday the 13th The Series, Street Justice, and Are You Afraid of the Dark? Winning was excited about the offer to direct Turbo. In his mid-30s, it was the first time he'd been given the chance to work on a high-profile, big-budget action movie. Those are my air quotes, not his. He wanted to make the kind of movie that he would have loved going to see as a kid. Oh, with a joke hole that's just for farts. They replace your real toilet with a fart toilet? When was the last time you got any action in a movie theater? Ah! Get ready. Here comes the bride! Oh, man. For the biggest. You're going on a diet the minute we get back. Baddest. Woo. Most awesome. Woo. Rumble in the universe. Thinking about it just gives me goose. That's my man! Yeah! Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. I didn't even get a honeymoon! Rated PG. The Power Event of the Year arrives this Friday only in theaters. The script went through multiple rewrites, but the final shooting draft titled Turbo Power Rangers Race to the Volcano was still epic in length and breadth. Taking the Rangers around the world, fighting monsters, wrestling alligators, creating zords, falling in love with mermaids, underwater fights, damaged ranger suits, and more. On top of all that, Turbo was going to rectify two mistakes the first Power Rangers movie made. One, this time, stay in continuity, and two, save Saban some money reproducing the Japanese costumes and zords that could then be reused in the Power Rangers Turbo series that immediately followed the movie. The goal was a seamless transition from the television to the movie theater and back again. Instead of trying to reinvent the franchise, the new approach was to make it required viewing. Turbo got a smaller budget than the 1995 Power Rangers movie and less time to shoot. The 1995 film was shot over four months in Australia, Turbo in about four weeks in Tennessee, Hawaii, Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> um, four months in Australia, Turbo in about four weeks in Tennessee, ha oh, Hawaii. Tennessee, Hawaii, California, and Japan. The 1995 film was shot over four months in Australia, Turbo in about four weeks in Tennessee, Hawaii, California, and Japan. <laughs> After David Yost's departure from the production, Jason David Frank was the only remaining Season 1 Ranger. For Season 4 Power Rangers Zeo, he switched from the White Ranger to the Red Ranger, which is traditionally the leader of the team in all of the Japanese series, and, more importantly, the guy assigned to the Red Vehicles for all the toys. Steve Cardenas, who became the Red Ranger after Austin St. John left the series, was moved from red to blue for Zeo. During production of Power Rangers Zeo and the Turbo movie, Cardenas found himself going through the same motions as his predecessor, Austin St. John, attempting to rally the team to ask management for more money. 
As before, management still wasn't ready to concede anything. The result was Cardenas' Blue Ranger being written out of the series and the film. His character hurts his back early in the movie as the Rangers train for the competition. Has that ever happened to you? Call me right now, please. The new Blue Ranger also came from a previous Shell Danielson Shuki Levy film that I'm pretty sure is also unrelated to the Power Rangers, Rusty A Dog's Tale, starred Blake Foster as an orphan named Jory. Yori? You say Jory or Yori? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Levy was so impressed with Foster's ability to play an orphan that he brought him in to play Justin in Turbo, turning the franchise on its head, introducing the concept that one of the Rangers could be the same age as the kids who were watching it. Power Rangers was no longer just inspirational, it was aspirational. In the movie, Justin accidentally discovers the secret identities of the Power Rangers after Cardenas' Blue Ranger is hospitalized, Zordon rewards his snooping with the opportunity to become the youngest Ranger in history, and the ability to become an adult-sized human every time he morphs. While it wasn't a total reunion of the original cast as Shuki Levy had hoped, three out of the original six did appear, as well as series regulars Paul Schreer and Jason Narvey as Bulk and Skull, and Winston Richard as Zordon. The new central villain is Hilary Shepard Turner's Diva Talks, but Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed do make a brief cameo. Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, opted for more conventional visual effects over the computer-generated imagery of the 1995 movie. Costumes for characters like Elgar and Malagor were designed by the Chiodo brothers, known for their extensive portfolio of movie magic, including films like 1986's Critters, 1988's Critters 2, 1991's Critters 3, and 1992's Critters 4. Despite the lengthy script, according to director David Winning, they shot it all. Everything. The mermaid romance between Adam the Black Ranger and Mandika the Mermaid. The underwater fight against Diva Tox's minions in an attempt to save Jason and Kimberly that would have left the Rangers' suits in tatters, necessitating new suits. The jungle battle where Tommy and Catherine use a blowtorch to fend off a crocodile while they look for Larigo. An even longer, more treacherous journey through the volcano to find Malagor's lair. But the original cut of the film turned out at a robust two and a half hours. Winning said the script was easily 20% longer than any movie script he'd worked with. They easily could have split the action into two movies. But the nature of the film being a setup to the next season of Power Rangers didn't allow for that. So all those extra pieces, all those character moments, that turbo flavor had to be left on the cutting room floor. Well, that, that gets into the political territory, which we'll get into. I actually wasn't that involved with the editing by the end because... Uh because other people kind of took over toward the end. I didn't I didn't get fired, so to speak, but I kind of got I got shuffled off the movie toward the end, which was which was sad. It's really it was a really good experience, but you know, toward the end it got to be it got to be too huge and uh, other people were were involved and taken over. And I would have I would have tried to leave more in than was there. There was a whole cool crocodile fight with the flamethrower and the whole mermaid sequence and a bunch of other much more elaborate sequences that just kind of got pulled out. It's not like that's a new thing for me. A lot of the movies I work on end up a little overlong and they end up cutting stuff and you always, you always lose some of your babies and some of your favorite scenes. Winning thought for sure those cut scenes would end up on a DVD release at some point. However, as of this video, they are considered lost media. None of them have surfaced, but for every mystery, there is someone somewhere who knows the truth. Perhaps that someone is watching. Perhaps it's you. Greg. <laughs> Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, hit theaters March 28th, 1997. It opened with over $3 million its first weekend, then scooped up about $6 million more around the world by the end of its run, essentially breaking even, grossly underperforming relative to the first movie two years earlier. Some critics attacked the campiness of the production, the dialogue, and the storyline, while others praised the performances by Hilary Shepard Turner as Diva Tox and Amy Jo Johnson as Kimberly. Synergy was the word of the day as the movie being themed with the next season of the television series meant a longer shelf life for the toys and related merchandise. Anything that was produced and released for the film was technically for the show as well. As always, a full complement of action figures, robots, and roleplay items. Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, was released on VHS and Laserdisc in July of 1997, just four months after its premiere in theaters. Shout Factory released it on Blu-ray in 2019. As of this video, you can buy it or rent it digitally on various streaming platforms. Director David Winning attributes the box office underperformance to several things. One, it was released in March. The doldrums of movie season. Nothing exciting happens in March. Two, the first era of Power Rangers fans were aging out. And that's true. Fans were split specifically on the response to Justin, a child, being added to the Power Rangers roster. Despite the show being targeted at five to eight year olds, fans on the older end of the spectrum, perhaps 12 or 13, who discovered it in the first season would have been pushing 16 or 17 years old by the time Turbo was released. 
far too old, far too culturally sophisticated to waste their time on a show that was no longer taking itself seriously. This is supposed to be a show about teenagers with attitude. Under 13 years need not apply. Hard to say how much of that was also a response to the fact that the original cast, robots, suits, everything from that magical first season was nearly gone. Jason David Frank, second generation rangers Cardenas, Bosch, Sutherland, and third generation ranger Barice would all hand off their powers to new rangers halfway through the fifth season. Winning drove off with the satisfaction of having created something beloved. Thanks to VHS sales, Turbo made over $165 million and successfully ushered in a new generation of Power Rangers fans. My, my memory of it, when I think of the bad reviews, is sitting in, I went to, with my girlfriend at the time and we sat at, at the end of the movie, this little kid came running up the aisle when the credits were rolling. And he's like, I just, I'll never forget this, he ran up the aisle and as he passed me, he said, that's the best movie I've ever seen. Right, which is, which is it, to me, it was really gratifying to know that a lot of, a lot, a lot of kids really, really liked the movie when it came out. The movie was a bridge to the future of Power Rangers, a point at which they embraced what the franchise would become, matching the Japanese Super Sentai series season for season, refreshing the cast and merchandise every year for the next 12 seasons, shifting into Turbo. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, if you would like early access to the videos, ad-free, as well as behind-the-scenes feature sneak peeks at upcoming projects and exclusive monthly podcast about the show, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy and let us know in the comments down below if you've ever shifted into turbo <laughs> and what that means to you. Maybe you took it literally and shifted your car into turbo boost. Maybe you took it metaphorically and pushed a little harder to meet a deadline. Me, I took it ironically, grabbed a soda, sat in my living room and played Rocket League for three hours straight. <laughs> I'm the best there is at what I do. <laughs> Maybe not.